typically got into blog type arguments with people and you point out that yeah that could happen this could have happened but the math proves that the official story isn't what happened and you look at like what David Chandler was saying you measure the the rate of fall and it turns out to be about two-thirds the rate of gravity two-thirds the speed of of a gravitational fall the acceleration of gravity and it and what that means is that all of the resistance of the building underneath was only one-third G. Okay, now if it's only resisting one-third G, now because of Newton's laws equal and opposite forces, the maximum that the top can be exerting on the bottom is also one-third G. Right. Which means that the bottom is being destroyed with one-third of the force that it withheld before the collapse began. That doesn't compute. People think that they're, I mean, and they're right. It would take a tremendous amount of force to do the damage scene. But to have it happen with one third of the static weight of the top of the building, nonsense, folks, nonsense. Yeah, that's kind of a, a little bit unintuitive how that works. But typically, you know, you, you would expect that the, uh, the top is pushing down harder. Uh, that happens when it's slowing down. When it's slowing down, you're actually getting tremendous pushing on both ends, top and bottom. But when it's accelerating down, getting faster, is actually putting less force on the lower part than uh, it was when it was standing still. Yeah, if you were standing on a scale and it's still, your weight is being registered. But if you and the scale are falling, now the scale shows zero. Right. Until you hit something, then it's... And That's it's the it. same way. As long as the smooth acceleration that was observed, and we're not talking about conjecture now, it was smooth. When you do the measuring and look at the graph, there are no sudden changes in acceleration that, as would happen when it, there were impacts. Oops, sorry about that microphone. <laughs> but each impact would be observed on the graph. So it's not a question of, I think, that it happened this way. The graph says it did not happen that way. Right. Period. That's, un that's the end of the discussion. It's not possible to suggest it happened that way now that we have that graph right and that's a good point and it's also another physical uh, law there conservation of momentum uh, mass times velocity has to be maintained and so as the as you get a crunching where a, a next floor is hit by the top the mass of that whole glob now has increased mm -hmm. to be higher than it was when it right before the impact so at that point in time you should have got a, a deceleration Right. Which makes intuitive sense anyway. When it hits, you should expect to see down, the collisions. Right. You hit the wall with your hand, and your hand stops. That's a dramatic slowing down. And we never saw any slowing down. There's no evidence of any impacts whatsoever. And beyond that, you never see actually any pile driver effect anyway. The top part is being blown outside the right. perimeter. Right, that so-called pile driver effect, as you see on the David Chandler videos, mm -hmm. the part that's being destroyed, there's nothing <laughs> above it anymore, but it's still being destroyed. There's... there's there's no evidence of anything pushing from the top right. at all. You can't see anything pushing. It all you starts see is with something out. at the top, okay, but it's destroyed first, and then the rest of the building gets destroyed by what? Nothing. Right. We've got about two minutes left. Okay, I want to...